they do It wasn't only meant for me, it was meant for you Now that's a whole lot of brother Jesus had to spook Joy that it brings when we speak on the king of all kings The supreme when love is the thing The hurt and the tears from the pain he endeared That none of the sun should ever season on today. Is this your season? Hallelujah We're in a new season, it's called fall or as some people call autumn. This is the season. This is the time that God is blessing, protecting, and watching over his people on today. Are you grateful on today? Hallelujah. This is your season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is your season on today. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for the day that he created just for us. I want to thank God because he's mighty. In Psalms 147, 5, it says, Great is our Lord, and mighty in power is he. Hallelujah. His understanding is infinite, unmovable. He's infinite. His understanding is infinite. He understands everything that you're going through. He understands the little things in your life. He understands the big things in, his life, in your life. He just wants to know, are you going to give it to him? You can't go all day longer. If it's too heavy, are you going to give it to God on today? I'm here to encourage you on today to give it to God. Don't think that everything that's given to you is for you to carry along. God said, every heavy weight, give it to him. It's not yours to hold on to. Give it to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. Pastor, can you turn that off for us, please? Thank you, Lord God. Lord, you are mighty and you are awesome, and we thank you and we praise you for this day that you created just for us. We thank you and we praise you for all your many blessings you bestowed upon our lives, Lord God. We thank you for your word on today, Lord God, in Psalms, Lord God, 147 and 5, Lord God. We thank you that you are powerful, you are mighty, and everything that we give to you, it is yours, Lord God. You said lay it at your feet, Lord God, and we give it to you on today, Lord God. We're not going to pick it back up, and we thank you and we praise you because you're mighty. And you're powerful. And everything that's about you is about love, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And for that reason, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you, Holy Name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that in Matthew 5, and starting with verse 21, it talks about anger. To love one another. To let go of that anger, Lord God. And if we love one another, we show love, and we go to our brother, and if we tell our brother we are, we are apologizing for what we've done or for what they've done, we forgive them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us just as much in Matthew 5 and 21, that you tell us to go to our brother we have a call. Before we give, Lord God, we can't give enough. God said we want you, he wants you, to go before the brother that has upset you. To go to the brother that has done you wrong. And ask for forgiveness. Before you even come to the altar, go to your brother, go to your sister, say, hey, I forgive you, I love you. Yes, it's still no matter what you've done, I still love you. God said, go to that brother, go to that sister. Before you even give. Because see, back in the old days, back in the old times, people thought if I gave, then I could give my word to heaven. God said, not so. He said, he won't even accept your gift that you're giving if you have an ought with your brother. I say to you today, you got an ought with your brother, you got an ought with your sister, go to them, ask for forgiveness. Forgive them, and then bring your gift to the altar. Amen. Don't Amen. hold on to that extra baggage. Let it go on today. This is a time and a season that God is blessing. This is a time and a season that God is protecting us, watching over us, strengthening us, and encouraging us. Don't let something that's holding you back Cause you to miss your blessing. God said, let it go. Go to that brother and go to that sister and ask for forgiveness. Apologize if you've done something wrong. And then bring that gift to the altar. God said, then I can receive it. And then guess what? He pours out blessings that we don't even have room enough to receive it all. Because you have done the right thing according to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I pray that you are encouraged on today. No matter what it looks like out there. No matter what the news, no matter what the media has said, God is still in control of it all. And for that reason, we want to bless his holy name on today. And we want to say thank you, Lord God. We praise you, we magnify you, we worship you in spirit and in truth. This day and very Amen. Morning. As we go forth in the service, we want to say, God, continue to bless. God, continue to bless. God, continue Amen. to bless. Amen. God, continue to bless. God, continue to bless.
continue to bless. God continue to bless. Pastor William R. Campbell Jr. Amen. 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 Glory. Take Hallelujah. that with you. Take it with you, please. Take it with you, please. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn it, Turn it on. Glory to God, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in here. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Glory to your holy name, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you for this mighty day that you have made for us, Lord. Yes, Lord God. We thank you for the, all those that desire to be here with us and sharing the word today, Lord God. Amen. We thank you for your spirit that moves in this place, Lord God. We thank you for the power and the anointing that goes forth out of you, Lord, into yes, Lord. us. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, and we praise your mighty name. Amen. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 As Pastor Wendy so graciously gave an introduction to the message of uh, forgiveness, we thank her because it's not an easy message to preach and teach to individuals. And as we understand that God moves us in forgiveness and he wants us to be able to forgive those that harmed us, that hurt us, and did us wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it's hard when it's family. Mm -hmm. It's hard, watch this, not only when it's family, but when you think your family has done something wrong. In, in actuality, they never did anything wrong besides love on you mm -hmm. and care for you. And some folks, the problem is, some folks don't understand when you have love in a corrective manner and, and as she said a tough love but we're going to say a corrective love mm -hmm. when I correct you when you do something wrong but watch this we come to you in love we come into you in admiration we come to you because we want to see you do better That's right. and we want you to be better Amen. so this is this love and this forgiveness is a hard lesson and as I told you on the set, part two of this message that I had to, before we even preached it, part two, I had to go to a friend and get things right. I had to go to him and in order for me to teach you something. How, how do you expect me to be able to teach something and I haven't moved in it? If I don't move in forgiveness, if I don't do the things that the Lord wants me to do to get it right, mm -hmm. I'm at fault now yes, and I'm teaching in error mm -hmm. and you might you might get a good word you might get a, a powerful word from it but guess who's condemned I am because I taught something that I'm not even living All right. I taught something that, that I, I, I can't understand how or phantom how to help you out of if I can't do it myself so I had to do it in order to be able to move in what God has in store for me. Amen. Not only in store for me, but this ministry. Amen. This house of prayer. This house of power. And not only for this house and in this, in this ministry, but for your lives. So we thank God for all that he's doing. And I'm sorry that he's done, but he's telling us to elevate ourselves too. So we have a mighty work to do. We have an awesome work to do in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I thank him and I praise him for all that he's allowed us to wake up to mm -hmm. and, and put into our mind and put into our spirit what we need to do to continue to move at a higher realm in him. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I want to go higher and higher in the Lord. I'm not, I'm not satisfied right here. I want to go higher and higher and higher. And that, what that means to us is that everything that he has in store for us, I want to get a part of. I want to be a part of it because it's him. Amen. And watch this. More of him and less of me. Amen. More of you, Lord, and less of me. So we thank him for today. We thank him for as we move forward in this Let's Move in Forgiveness Part 3. I'm going to continue to challenge you as you continue to challenge me. But one of the things is, God says, well, we challenge each other for the, the betterment of the kingdom, for the love of the kingdom, for the love of him, 
So if you have your Bibles, we're going to read a few scriptures off the bat. Of course, we're going to read the subject type, the subject scripture that goes with this, but we're adding more scripture because we, we can't, like I said, we can't stay there. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to start off with the subject scripture, which is Colossians chapter 3. And when you have it, please rest to your feet so I know that we all on one accord and that we're all there together. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation first. And it says, Tolerate the weakness of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you, if you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. So it, it, we understand, watch, we understand that this thing is a gift. God has blessed us with a gift to forgive. And, and watch this, Brother James, everybody don't get that gift. Everybody has opportunity, let me say, to receive this gift. But everybody don't want this gift. Why doesn't every, you may have a seat, I'm sorry. You may have a seat in the Why doesn't everybody want this gift? Because some people like a pity party. Some people like wallowing in the mud in, in this unforgiveness. They want to hold this animosity against somebody all their lives. They want to do it forever and a day. And, and it's not hurting nobody but them. They're only hurting themselves if they're moving on forgiveness. Yes, you got to forgive somebody. And we took it to the extreme that murdered your kid, that caused you to divorce from your wife or your husband, that stole all your money, stole your identity, uh, burned down your house, stole your car, stole your girlfriend, stole your boyfriend. Yeah, we got to forgive those. We got to be able to, to move past and beyond what's taking place in that. So once again, let's, let me read this scripture, and I'm going to read it in the New King James, and I'm going to start from verse 12 this time in Colossians 3, and I'm going to read 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. <laughs> hey, I like that. I, I got to stop right there. Therefore, as the elect of God, can I tell you that you are the elect of God? That means God chose you. Not only did he chose you, he chose you from the foundations of this world before you were even placed in, the, in your mother's womb. Don't let me have to go and change this message into something about time so you can understand what it is. So he chose you before he placed you into time. He chose you while you were yet still in eternity with him. He chose you before you was a twinkling in your mama's and your daddy's eye. He chose you before you was conceived in the womb. He chose you as an elect because watch, he had a purpose Amen. before he placed you into this thing that's called time. He had a purpose that he, want, he wants you to, to, to fulfill Amen. the mission that he's given you. God doesn't want you to lose. God doesn't want to see any of his elect lose because God is a winner. And in turn, if he's a winner, he wants you to be a winner with him also. So we have to learn to forgive so we can win. I want to win. I want to win in Christ. So it goes on to say, therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. And then we go to verse 13, which I just read to you in Colossians. I mean, in the Passion Translation, but we're in Colossians 3, uh, 3 and verse 13 says, Bearing with one another. So watch this. Bearing with one another. So what you go through... I have to bear with you. I have to go through with you to, in order to get you to the spot that God wants you to be. And, and watch this. 
This is the part that we have to understand is when I'm bearing with you, I'm forsaking what I'm going through. That's right. Amen. I'm not even concentrating on the hurt that I'm going through now because I'm bearing with you. We have a good friend of our family, uh, the mother and the granddaughter are very good friends of ours. And they lost the daughter and they lost the mother. But we're bearing with them. The hurt that they're going through, we're going through with them. Because they're not alone. And see, this is what the scripture is telling us to do. Whatever they go through, whatever, whatever your fellow man goes through and you're trying to get them to the kingdom, you have to go through with them. But I got to give you a qualifier on this, ladies and gentlemen. I have to, to be able to release you in a place for you to understand that you, once you have helped them, cannot stay in that same spot. You cannot continue to, to bear it. You, you go through it with them, then you have to let it go. You don't want to continue to wear somebody else's hurt all the rest of your life. That's right. So you got to be able to help them and continue to move on. And say, Lord, I, I've done everything that you've commanded me to do. I've done everything that you put into my heart to do. Now can you lift this burden off of me, Lord? As you lift it, as I help lift it off your fellow son or your fellow daughter. Keep that in remembrance because you will wear yourself out. Yeah. And we've seen so many pastors. We've seen so many uh, uh, church members or, or, or house of prayer members wear their self out and leave because they can't ha handle the burden of continually holding on to somebody else's hurt. So you have to be able to, to move on and continue to continue to keep them up in prayer. But when God releases it from you, you can't go back and get it, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. So verse 13, it says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So it is it's like this. How dare I not forgive somebody else when I ask Christ to forgive me? How dare I not move in this unforgiveness and, and I have to ask God to forgive me for all that I've done? Do you understand what God is saying? That How do you expect me to forgive you if you don't forgive your fellow man? We have to understand how to move in this unforgiveness. We've got to understand how important unforgiveness is for our salvation. We have to continue to love on each other and foster this love and, and continue to help our fellow man and fellow uh, woman out. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Hey, Amen. Am I helping us today? Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 10 and 11. Verse 10 says, Now whom you forgive, now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sake in the presence of Christ. Verse 13, uh, 11. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his advice. So if we don't forgive, if we don't walk in this unforgiveness as we expect to be forgiven, we leave space for Satan to come into our lives, to run havoc over our lives, to disrupt what God is doing. If we don't walk in this unforgiveness. So what do I want to do? I want to move on back to last week a little bit. I want to talk about how Stephen forgave and how Stephen was able to forgive those that were stoning him in a time when he, he knew that he was going to die. He said, Lord, do not charge this against them. 
Because what he had, what he understood was that he had a purpose in his life that he had to forgive those that was attacking him. In order for something else to transpire. I think y'all missed that a little bit. See, he was getting stoned. But do you understand Saul was a persecutor of the brother? Saul wanted to see all, all the Christians wiped out. Of him. He wanted to see all the Christians taken away. He wanted to see all the Christians be behead, beheaded and killed and, and thrown into the lions. He wanted to, to see not one Christian survive. But while Stephen was being stoned, Saul was there. And Stephen undoubtedly had to see him standing there. But he said, do not charge them. Let, let's go to the scripture. Let's go to uh, 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 the pick it up so we can give you a better understanding what the Lord is saying to us in this scripture. Can we help each other? Can we bear each other's sins? Can we forgive those that despitely use us? Are you able? Can you forgive somebody that hurts you? Do you want to forgive is the question. And if you don't forgive, you're going to have this thing held against you. So you don't want something held against you when you're trying to move in the, of the things that God has in store for you. God is a forgiving God. God is a loving God. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It's not that you don't like, you don't have to be around that person. Yeah, you can forgive them, but move on. Because you don't want to harbor this into your, into your spirit. You don't want to continue to hold something that's going to weigh you down, that's going to move you out of the, the relationship that God has in store for you. So let's go to Acts chapter 7. And I'm going to read it from the King James, verses uh, 59 and 60. And it says, and they stoned Stephen. And let me tell you this, and I got I to gotta say this before we even go. Do you understand that Stephen was a righteous man? Stephen did nothing wrong to nobody. The only thing that he did in the eyes to the people that, they, that, that wanted to stone him was to follow the word of God. So let me tell you, sometimes when you follow the word of God, it's going to hurt. Because what, what it means is you're going to be out there sometimes by yourself. Because everybody's not going to agree with you. Everybody's not going to want to hang around with you. But it's okay. It's okay. Because if you continue to show the love, those that want to receive the love are going to love on you. Amen. So, once again, verse 59 in Acts 7, it says, And they stoned Stephen. As he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Amen. This man right here understood that he, he was practicing righteousness. He not, I'm sorry, he wasn't, he was living righteousness. So he was saying, Jesus, as they, as they get ready to stone me, I want you to receive my spirit. So to share, what I'm saying to you is that I am still living holy and faithful, Lord. I want you to receive this holy and faithful body, Lord, as the enemy defiles it, as the enemy harms it. Lord, I want you to have it where you can make it whole again. And he goes on to say, in verse 60, then he said, then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Isn't that something? A man that, that, that's getting stoned bows down and, say, and said, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. Don't charge my enemy with this, Lord. Forgive them. And then he said, and then it says, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. So literally, God said, okay, no more pain. Come on, son. You've accomplished your mission. Because you stood strong in the, in the adversity of what was taking place. 
You stood on the word. You stood on the promise. That, that I was going to protect you and I was going to keep you and I was going to have you I, I was going to have you in my hand. So you have to understand what takes place here is now that Saul, when Saul became Paul, Saul at first was a persecutor of the saints. At this moment he was there while Stephen was being stoned. Saul was watching, stoning. He was there while they were stoning Stephen to death. And Stephen knew it. He was there. Say that. But Stephen knew he was there. Say that. But Stephen knew he was there. Those that persecute you, those that try to run you down, they there. They know what they're doing. They know what's taking place. But you see this righteous man said, Lord, don't charge this sin against them. I know it's tight, but it's right. I'm trying to help us get to a place where we can move in the freedom of God, no matter what takes a place, no, no matter what kind of hell is going on around us. I want us to understand that how much God loves us and he cares for us, but he wants us to stay righteous, no matter what. How can we hold something against somebody if we don't walk in forgiveness ourselves? Forgive them, God. So if he would not have asked God or if he would have been angry and, and wanted to get back at him, do you understand that Saul would never became Paul? Paul one that wrote two-thirds of the Bible, was there persecuting the saints. He was, he was there against God's elect, against God's chosen. But Stephen had to stand strong for him so he could accomplish the mission that God had for him. And I'm sorry, and I said the Bible, I'm sorry, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Get that right. Two-thirds of the New Testament he wrote. And look how we judge people. And this man asked God not to charge this against them. Mm -hmm. Because he know the conversion or the transformation would have never taken place from Saul becoming Paul if he would not have asked for, stood there and asked not to be charged against them. See, the problem with us, we judge people on what they're doing in that moment. Do we understand anything about moments? Moments come and go. So we can't, we can't hold somebody for what they do in a moment all the time. Because they move, a moment literally is moving off of your emotion and an emotion change. And if I knew that song, I would get it for you. Emotions. <laughs> Look at the funny guys we got in here. But think about it the emotions. Just think about your emotions, how your emotions change from one moment to the next. How the, it depends on how the weather feels for you. How much money you have in your pocket? Emotions. We learned that Stephen didn't move off his emotions. He let the spirit that was inside of him move. Not realizing that God can forgive you and never change his mind about what was spoken over your life or what he has spoken before he placed you into your mother's womb. God said, I, I'm not going to change my mind if you continue to do, live the way that I've ordained you to live. I've spoken something over you, and the choice is yours now. Do you want to continue to walk in unforgiveness, or do you want to forgive? See, we, we want to have this ability to put people on hold. We want, we want people to stay where they are. 
We want to hold them to, to what they did to us. What the, the song says, the shackles are off you. We can't shackle somebody down when the shackles are removed from us. Those that God forgives, listen to me, those that God forgives still can meet the, meet the commitment that God has, has ordained for their lives. We try to hinder them by holding them hostage for our unforgiveness, what they've done from us. We won't forgive them. And, and I, I, I kind of misled some folks in, in what I said on last Monday in Bible study because I didn't say it the proper way. What happens is we, we hold people to where they are and we don't allow them to move freely into their gifting because we hold them in sin. But we understand that God moves them to where he wants them to be. We try to hinder their walk. What we do is call, cause a stumbling block in their lives but because God is still not going to move them for what he's ordained. We cause a stumbling block. But God is the one that's going to move us to where he wants us to. Watch this. Go to Psalms. I, I, I'll correct this thing. I, I had to go and I apologize to Sister Davis and, and Sister Myers and, and all of them that didn't have an understanding of what I was saying because I didn't say it the right way. See, I even still today ask for forgiveness for something I don't say right. We've got to get this word right because I don't want to be a hindrance. I don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody in their walk with Christ. Psalms chapter 103. And I'm reading it from the Amplified. And you've got to understand how God operates in your life. When you understand this, you're going to be able to move freely in the things that God has for you. I want you to be free. I want you to enjoy everything that God has in store for you. Amen. Can you handle it? Do you want to handle it? Psalms 103, verses uh, 12 and 13, it says, As far as... The east is from the west. How far is the east from the west? Can anybody tell me? I got an eye roll up here. Anybody else? I got a head shaking no back there. I got an opposite end. But, and I just got one that's just staring at me. <laughs> and that one that's staring at me is like me staring in the mirror. Listen to it. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. So listen to me. If, we, if I retain and hold on to a man's sin, then God has forgiven him. Or no matter what the crime, the Bible says, God casts it far as the east is from the west. We don't know how far it is. We don't know. But God says it's that far. That you don't know how far it is. God is literally telling us that I am throwing that into the sea of um, I mean forgiveness. Forgetfulness. God said I'm tossing it into the sea of forgetfulness. I forgot about it. I don't know what you did when you asked. But see what the thing is, you got to come to God and ask with a sincere heart. Lord, forgive me against my transgressions. Lord, I'm sorry for my transgressions. See, if you never came to, to God and asked him to forgive you, you got to ask for the forgiveness. But if you have already asked and you slipped back, you got to come and say, tell God that I'm sorry for my transgressions, God. I want to move on from it. I'm sorry for hurting one of your children, God. I'm sorry I want to be on that, God. So watch this. Someone wronged you. But they have saved themselves by asking God and giving their repentance to God. 
They, they, they asked God, forgive me, Lord. I'll, for, I'll repent against everything I did against you. And God forgave them. Mm-hmm. But now, we're going to, to God now and ask saying, God, you get them, God, for what they did to me, God. You take care of them, God. You, 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 God, you see what they did to me. God, I want you to, don't kill them, Lord. Don't kill them, but harm them, Lord. Give them the worst kind of pain that they can ever imagine, Lord. Because how they treated me, God. I want you to give, God, you, I came to you a long time ago, God. And they, and they, they harmed me, God. I'm, I'm your child, God. I want you to, to take, you said the words of vengeance is not mine, but it's the Lord. Lord, you, you take the vengeance for me, Lord. I got this gun in my pocket. I'm not going to kill him, Lord. I want you to do it to him, Lord. But you, what you have to understand, God has never seen them at this point. He only sees you. Because they already came and asked God for forgiveness. So God said, and we looked at it. Look at the scripture. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So God said, hey, I don't see them anymore. I don't see their sin anymore because they laid it at the altar and they asked me to forgive them or they repented against it or they said, I'm sorry, Lord, with a sincere heart. Right. And God saying, yeah, he, yeah, they did wrong to you. They paid a price for what they did, but now they came to me with a sincere heart. And they asked me to forgive them. So I don't see it no more. Only thing I see is you harboring what they did. So as God goes to the crime scene where it takes place, this is what God does. We, can you help me there, uh, deputy, if I go wrong? So you the law enforcement here. But look, God goes to the, to the crime scene. And that person's fingerprints that hurt you is all over the crime scene. God says that as far as from the east to the west, I have now wiped that scene clean. They came and cleaned it. They call a cleaner. They came and cleaned up everything. No more blood stains. All the, the, the fingerprints that, that I laid at the crime scene is now gone because I went to God and asked him to forgive me. So the one that I hurt now is at the crime scene looking around trying to find the evidence. And he's touching stuff. So when God comes in, and when, and when the police comes in now, rather, the police doesn't see my car, my fingerprints on there. They, they see the fingerprints of the one that I hurt. Because what they're doing is continue to harbor them in unforgiveness. So now they're carrying the sin. Mm, they're guilty. God said, I, I forgave the one that hurt you because he came to me sincere heart. Only one that I see now is your fingerprints because you continue to carry the luggage. You continue to move in unforgiveness. So God, it says I don't see them. I just see you. So how do you you expect me to move on your behalf and you still carrying the sin? Oh my, I think that's a Salah break right there. Take a moment to gather, let it marinate in your spirit. They wronged you, but you, you're the one that's still on scene. All evidence goes to you being guilty. So you get prosecuted because you didn't forgive. You didn't move in forgiveness. So at one point, can I ask you, when did you stop living? Better you ask yourself that. When did I die? 
when did I stop living? See, the person that hurt you went to God and asked God for forgiveness. And they're moving on with their life. They're living. Say that, living. They're living. No, you got to say it like I said, living. living. They're not just living, they living. Because they went to God for, with a sincere heart. They asked God to forgive them. Look, God, if I've hurt anybody. Okay, they didn't come to you. Sometimes they forgot who they hurt. But they know that they had to get it right. They understood that they had to, to do something to help, help themselves get better. So they said, Lord, if it's anybody that I hurt, if anybody I did wrong to, Lord, forgive me for that. Everybody that did, everybody that beat you wrong is not going to come up to you and apologize. At one point, you have to grow from it. At one point, you got to remove your shackles from your foot. Because what happens is you stay in shackle, that means you can only go so far. Either way. Right, left, front, backwards. You're only going so far. And watch, the shackles are already re removed on that individual's foot. They get to wander. They go to wherever they want to go. You're stuck. Unstuck, unstick yourself. Forgive. I don't want you to stop living. Stop rehearsing those things that hurt you. Ooh. Ooh. I think the Lord just touched me. I, I got to chill on that one. Stop rehearsing the, your past. Stop rehearsing past hurts. Move on from it. Free yourself. And the reason that you are still stuck where you are is because you have died at the hands of somebody. Watch this. That hurt you and you have not released that person from the hurt. So you died at the hands of somebody that hurt you and you, you haven't released yourself from the hurt. And I said earlier, some of them already went to God. But you still walking around in this hurt. What was me? Why not me? Why can't I move on, God? They went to God and received their forgiveness. Wow. And you are the only one that is still sitting in that hard place. Or that bad place. What a terrible place. Whatever the word is that you put in there is that place that you don't need to be in. Right. Amen. Listen to me. Look at me. Everybody that's under the sound of my voice right now, that's in the sanctuary, that's live streaming, and those that's going to hear it later on, re on uh, Rewind, God has been telling you that he can't bring up what they've done to you because they ask for forgiveness. God said, I can't bring it up because they ask for forgiveness from me. He's telling you that. He's telling you that. God is saying that, he's, that he can't bring their past up. Stop stick, being stuck there. God can't continue to stay there for you because they ask for forgiveness. He's released them from that. They're moving on. When are you going to move on? I don't care who hurt you. And I don't, I'm not being harsh, but I'm trying to help you once again. And sometimes you need to be helped in a way that you're going to understand this thing. 
I cannot sugarcoat it. I want this ministry. I want this the power that God has for this ministry and those that, that follow us, live stream, or whoever attached themselves to this ministry, to be able to move beyond where they are right now. I know it's tight, but this is the kind of message that we need to have to be able to free us to move on to where we need to be. And watch this. This is what Jesus had to do. Not only forgive them, but love them. Mm-hmm. Before I go any further, I, I guess I better ask this question. Do you love God? Do you love God? Yes, sir. Well, tell him that. Tell him. Love you, God. See, you don't understand how you can free yourself by just some of the words that you say. That's right. That right there. Got God moving in his seat. My, my child has cried out to me. Just saying I love you, God, is saying that you're crying out to him. Okay, go to Matthew 5. Y'all don't, y'all don't understand me. Y'all don't even believe what I'm saying. What's that? Oh, amen. Matthew 5, was you in verse 44? <laughs> so you wasn't there. <laughs> amen. Matthew 5, verse 44 and 45 in the Passion Translation reads as thus. It says, however, I say to you, love your enemy. Oh, love them. Oh, they hurt me, God. Ah, oh, they stole my woman. They stole my man. They stole my money. They stole my identity. They took my child. Love them. Ooh, love them or leave them. <laughs> All right, stay focused. <laughs> However, Scripture says, I say to you, love your enemy. Bless the one who curse you. Oh, uh huh. This is where this where we become that two year old self or that five year old self, and we start having temper tantrums, right? I don't know. I never seen those temper tantrums. You the only one seen Donnie's temper tantrums. He didn't do that in front of me. <laughs> That's your mom saying that she busting you out there, bro. <laughs> and it says, "Bless the one who curses you, and do something wonderful for the one who hates you." Lord, you talking to me? <laughs> Lord, that, that's for them, right? Lord, that ain't for me, Lord. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what some of these, these, these church folks will say. I ain't say the, how, the power of prayer or house of prayer people. Church folks will say, that ain't for me, Lord. You know how, you know how them, 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 them saints do. Oh, oh, man, he's talking to you. He ain't talking to me. But yet still, you don't even want to did the crime. <laughs> But he ain't talking to you. See, I'll tell you an example, and then we're about to close out here. I'm going to give you a quick example of how you have to love your enemies. I pulled into McDonald's one day. This was a few years back, and it just, Lord, brought this thing back to my remembrance. Pulled into McDonald's, and when you come around the curve in McDonald's and Blythewood, it's a blind spot for somebody pulling out. So I'm pulling in, and this person is pulling out. And then I whoop, whoop, and she gave me the happy finger. She said, she gave me the bird while I go by. She said, go fly on this. <laughs> I get in line and order, order my food, and lo and behold, look who's behind me. She ordered food. <sighs> no, you don't, Lord. She just flipped me off, Lord. I know you don't want me to do that, God. Pay for her food. I was on my way back to the church. <laughs> we were still on Wilson, but I was on the way back to the church because some of the brothers at church was hungry. I'm buying them food. They was hungry. And the Lord said, you buy her food. Hmm. Okay, God. 
I understand. I paid for, paid for food. And the thing that got me, and God, God has a sense of humor. The order that I had, I had to wait in line. I had to move up and wait. I wanted to pay for food and move on. I don't care what happens after that. I just wanted to pay for food and move on. I had to sit there. She jumps out of the car. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute. You were just flipping me off here a second ago. But I said, all right, God. I'll forgive it, Lord, and I'll do what you say. But see, I could have been like one of these things, and I thought about something I read. Somebody did that to somebody else, and, and they paid for the person's food. And they got up to the window. And when they, when they paid for the person's food, they uh, said, can I have the, the food that I paid for the people behind me? And they took off with the food. I could have I did that, but I would have been in a big trouble. <laughs> yeah, I just read this last week. <laughs> Man said, this lady flipped me off, and I, I said, okay, I'll get her back. I'll pay for her food. And then when he paid for the food, he got to the next window. He said, I paid for that food that's mine and took off with his order and the order from the person behind him. But I, I thank God I didn't do that. <laughs> I would have been in big trouble. But you see how this thing says. Let's look at it again. Matthew 5 and 44 says, however, I say to you, love your enemy. Bless the one who curses you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you. And respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. Amen. That's good. Hmm. Listen to me. 45. For what will you reveal? I mean, for what? For that will reveal your identity as children of, the, of your heavenly father. He is kind to all by bringing the surprise to war and rainfall to refresh whether a person does what is good or evil. So watch this. God said, no matter what they do against you, good or bad. If I tell you to do it, do it. Forgive and move on. It's tight. But it's right. If you want to live this life. And I'm talking to those that want to live a life set aside. Those that want to, that want to enjoy everything that God has in store for them. And in me being the pastor that I am, I want you to enjoy everything that God has in store for you. So I'm going to preach those tight words that he gives to me as, as well as the ones that get you jumping and shouting. But it's going to be a word from God. It's going to be something that's going to challenge you, good or bad, in your life. So I'm telling you, if you don't forget, you have become a partaker of the sin that they committed against you. If you don't forgive, you are now a partaker of the sin that was committed against you. And this means that you have picked up the sin that they have committed. So watch this. So when you come into the presence of God with that issue, it's not hindering my life. It's hindering your life. It hinders my prayer life. And I'm guilty of someone else's sin that they have committed against me. Let me hear. Oh, I heard that. That was like a pin drop. I can hear. Do you understand what this just what you what just happened? That if you hold this sin that they committed against you and you didn't forgive them, and you never did commit that sin, but now you committed it because all evidence points to you. Your fingerprints is the only thing that's on the luggage. It's only you. God forgave them. He said he wiped theirs away as far as the east is from the west. I forgave them and moved on. Only thing shown is you. And you are guilty against something someone else has committed because I have, have my prints on this thing now. Mm. On someone else's scene. So I am carrying around this guilt and God has forgiven them because of their confession. God 
forgave them because of their confession. Hmm. Ain't that something? See how important forgiveness is in your life? To walk around in unforgiveness is walking around and carrying sin that you've never done, but you're carrying it as if you have done it. Let me put it this way. You've never committed adultery, but you hold it on to somebody who committed adultery against you. So God says they ask for forgiveness. I forgave them. But you never forgave, so now the sin is accounted towards you because you never forgave and you're harboring it. Man, isn't that rough? Come on, let's get our lives right. I plead that you ask, get yourself right. And we're not finished with this, this message. We're not finished with this series yet. It's so much more. It's so much more. And I was less plain next week and more seriousness of this word because I got to get it in you. I got to get it in us. I have to free us. Because this is a hospital. We're going to have people. I can't treat everybody to come in here. I'm going to need your help. So you got to get your life right in order to help somebody else. To take a load off the pastor. I need your help. I need you to show up. I need you to walk in unforgiveness. Or in forgiveness, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't walk in unforgiveness. Walk in forgiveness. <clears throat> Don't harbor unforgiveness is what I was, should have been saying. I love you. I love you to life and I love you on purpose for a purpose. And I want to see the purpose of God fulfilled in your life. Amen. As well as in my life. And I have fun doing my life. I want you to have fun doing your life. Amen. You know what else God said to us? Come back on next week so that you can get the rest of this unforgiveness. Get it in your life. Get it in your spirit. <clears throat> Ask God to forgive you. He'll do it. He turned. Say that for me.